The word photon or photons is very commonly used in quantum mechanics, but what does it mean? To put it another way, what does it really represent? The concept of a photon first emerged from Albert Einstein's paper on the photoelectric effect in 1905, where he introduced the idea of the quantization of light energy. However, it was only around the year 1926 that the word photon went into official use. Before the time of Einstein, the energy of light was thought to flow as a continuous stream in accordance with the formulation of classical physics. Einstein decided to partition the energy of these waves and group them in smaller quantities which he called quanta and it is this small group of energy carrier that is now called the photon. From this explanation, you see that a photon can be defined as a group of electromagnetic energy carriers. This does not say anything about whether or not the photon can be considered a particle. As a matter of fact, it shows that the photon is purely a wave. However, the photon is considered a real particle in quantum mechanics and the reason for that is still one of the fuzziness of quantum mechanics. In this video, I will be removing the force and giving a very clear and intuitive explanation of the photon. If you wish to stick around for more updates, logical and simple explanations like this, just click on that subscribe button. Check out my other videos to confirm how eye-opening this channel is, to give you more reasons why you should subscribe. Particles in the so-called quantum world cannot be seen with the naked eye, or directly observed by any other means. The only way to confirm their presence is by using detectors. These detectors are devices that produce effects can be directly observed by us when they interact with these quantum particles. Examples of these effects include lines in the cloud chamber, the glowing of the fluorescent screens, and so on. We established in the last video titled, What is a particle? That a wave is the apparent movement of particles of a medium and these particles, therefore, carry kinetic energy, which can be detected and measured by a detector placed in the path of the wave. This approach to wave analysis was also validated in my other video titled Space-Time Density Part 1, by which we were able to calculate the density of empty space and that of dark matter, and derived the Planck quantization equation for all transverse waves. The link to the videos is in the video description below. You can watch the video in order to judge for yourself the correctness of the approach since it is the same concept I am applying here. What I claimed is that the act of detection alone can give you any information whether something is a particle or a wave. For instance, when this wave strikes the detector, you get a reading of energy. You will still get the same energy reading if it was a solid ball with the same mass and velocity as the, as the particles of the wave that struck the detector. It is easy for you to say in this situation which one is a particle and which one is a wave because you can directly see them. But if this particle was as small as a quantum particle, such as an electron, and the wave in question was an EM wave, could you still differentiate the particle from the wave by mere detection? The answer is an unequivocal no. Looking at this analysis and the math I derived from it in the previous video, it becomes clear that a particle can behave as a wave if there is a stream of them, and a wave can behave as a particle if you let it strike something and be detected. 
But this is not the same as saying that a particle is a wave, and a wave is a particle. We are able to recover the Planck-Einstein equation and the De Broglie equation, which are the fundamental equations of quantum mechanics that brought in the idea of wave-particle duality. These equations, as we have seen, work for both a stream of particles and waves. Hence, the problem of wave-particle duality has been resolved. Now, let us go to the subject of today's video. What is a photon? There is no shred of doubt that light, as we know it, comes from the de-excitation of atoms in a substance. There is no other way that we know so far that light can be produced. When an electron in an atom gains energy, it moves to a higher energy level. No doubt the energy received is electromagnetic energy. When this happens, we say that the atom has been excited and is no longer in equilibrium. As we know, everything in the universe always strives to attain the lowest possible energy state. So, the excited electron will almost immediately drop back to its initial position, giving off the energy it gained as light. This, pro this process will continue as long as there is an energy source for the electrons. The light produced obviously must be of a certain wavelength, but the waveform will be very short because the source, which is the electron that produced the light, only did so for a short period of time. When this excitation and de-excitation happens again, the next stream of light is produced and this happens over a zillion times in a short time. Note that the next excitation and de-excitation must not necess necessarily be between the same energy levels as the previous one. So, the light produced each time might be of the same or different frequency depending on the energy level within which the transition took place. At the end, what you will have is a stream of short light pulses propagating from the atoms in all directions. Your eyes cannot detect that there are spaces between these pulses or that the observed beam is made up of pulses of different colors. But when you pass this beam, the prism, the colors get separated. And then you can see the different colors in their different proportions. The kind of color you then observe will tell you the kind of energy level transitions that occurred and hence the chemical elements that produce the light beam since different elements have different sets of energy levels. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the video if it makes sense to you. So now you see that a beam of light is simply a bunch of short pulses of light and perhaps other EM radiations with different frequencies and wavelengths, and these pulses are not necessarily linked end-to-end -to, -end to form a single stream of wave, as classical physics was suggesting. Instead, they come in chunks like Einstein proposed. Hence, the word quantization is appropriate in this context. Einstein was therefore correct. So, these short pulses of radiations that I have described, described are what we call the photons. When a photon strikes a detector, as we have seen earlier, an energy reading is gotten. A stream of these photons is like the stream of particles that we described. Note that in this situation, there are two frequencies involved, that is, the frequency of the light radiation and the frequency of the photons. The frequency of the photons here stands for how many photons pass a certain point in a given time, while the light or radiation frequency is the frequency of the radiation that makes up the photon. For a monochromatic light, these two frequencies can be the same 
in which case your detector that will be reading the frequency of the photon will not even know it is also reading the frequency of the radiation itself. Worst of all, it doesn't know if it is detecting a particle or a wave because it is all tangled. From this clear explanation, you see that a photon is made up of a wave, and a stream of these photons behave as a stream of particles when detected, which as we have seen, still gives the impression of a wave. When you fire a beam of light at a group of atoms, the photons of the beam, which may be of different colors and energies, will randomly strike the electrons of the substance. If an electron is met with a highly energetic photon, it will be emitted, and if not, it will not be emitted. This is the photoelectric effect. In the double slit experiment, a single photon, which is a wave, can undergo dispersion and interference to form the interference pattern we observe. These are the two main experiments in quantum physics that claim to verify the wave and particle nature of light and interpret it in a way that confuses everyone. But luckily, now I hope you are clarified on how all that works. I am sure you are asking this question right now. How then is an electron, which is a particle, able to undergo dispersion and interference like the photon? That is a topic for another video, so subscribe to get informed. Turn on the notification so that you will be the first to know when the video is uploaded. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. See you in the next video.